Okay, boys, how's it going? Burke Crown 88 here. I was going to watch the Pittsburgh-Chicago game, but uh, I thought, hey, I'm going to pop on and check out what the new rivals looks like. We've seen the collectibles, so we knew something was going to happen with rewards. And I wanted to pop on to see it. Normally, I'm pretty soft with how hard I can be on EA sometimes. And I'm not going to say this is terrible, this is an L, this is bad, but I will say this is confusing. And it almost feels like you're at a company right now like we're working for the company it feels like as players and it's like they're doing everything in their power to confuse us to no end so they can they can take stuff from us without us knowing or they can try to pull the wool over on our eyes on something but i, I, I don't get it because one i gotta spend more time now with these collectibles which i thought could have been a cool concept if they added players but they didn't add players and then i'm like okay if these con if these collectibles come in and they leave rivals rewards alone and just add a couple of collectibles that you can kind of save up and use for stuff later then fine but they took stuff from us and then they give us collectibles to go build to get that stuff so i don't really get it so we're going to get into it i hope you do enjoy it give it a thumbs up don't forget to leave a comment down below with how you feel about it what you want to talk about it i'm trying I'm, I'm gonna try not to be ridiculous here but i just i don't know why they want us to spend more time building sets and and in in the menus than in the game itself so let's get into it if you do enjoy it don't forget that sub button notification bell i'm just confused let's talk about it okay so this is division three rivals now in the rewards that i earned today that i don't get till tomorrow because i gotta wait 24 hours for no reason i don't get it but anyway the rewards i got today that i earned today that i get tomorrow i'm getting two packs champs points or double up or coins or whatever and now I'm getting one pack and nine collectibles. And the Jumbo NHL player pack isn't even as good as the ultimate pack you got before. So like the top tier pack got worse and then they give us collectibles. I, I, I see what they're going for here and they want us to be able to have the choice of what we want to build. Like, hey, maybe you don't like the elite pack. Maybe you prefer mega packs. That's fine. But you get nine collectibles. So for nine collectibles, I can build two diamond collectibles. I can't even build a power up collectible with my rewards when the double the non tradable packs would have built me a power up collectible. It doesn't matter what pack I pull. Like 14, 14 collectibles for an elite pack? I was getting an elite pack for playing. I, I literally lost rewards and I had to do more work to get less. A gold NHL player pack. So I get to add a gold NHL player pack to my rewards. Like I just, I don't know why they want everybody spending more time in this menu. That's what I don't get. That's, that's, that's what I'm struggling to understand. If they had added a player in here that you could have built and then worked on like hot champs, then I would have been like, you know what? Pack guaranteed rewards pick your poison fine then i would have been like okay that's not too bad at least you can go get a player to put in your lineup if you like said player but now i got to do all this work with all these collectibles which by the way I'll, I'll, I'll explain it more in a minute i just don't get it i just don't like just just give me the pack and then let me use the players how i want if i want to build an elite if i want to build a power collectible then i will build a power collectible but why like it feels like they're trying to confuse us and give us 19 moving pieces so we don't know they're taking good stuff away from us. Like, I, I'm just, anyway, that's enough of that. Let's talk about it. Let's break down everything that's going on. And uh, let's see what else we got today. <sighs> Sorry about that, guys. I just had to get that off my chest. It, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, um, let's go look at these new cards because we got a handful of new cards today that actually look really good. Uh, I like John Klingberg. He's going to be good for the theme team. So I'll probably go get him, uh, build him up use them see how he is the Leafs are probably going to beat montreal uh, in my eyes so uh it could be it could be a good card to go chase so let's look at all the new cards and forget about all this and just deal with it because it's in front of us and we got to do it so you're going to see here a one overall boost for winning the game markstrom versus malkin hall versus slavkovsky nugent hopkins versus kuzmenko boldy versus klingberg so it, so it's not even the montreal game this is on October 14th. So it's not even the next next Toronto game. It's whatever. That's fine. It, it, sure. It falls on the weekend, right? The weekend game where people can watch. I'm fine with that. Whatever. I've seen the John Klingberg. I thought it would be the Montreal game, but it's not. So are they going to beat Minnesota? Maybe. 
maybe i don't know that that's more up in the air to me than the montreal game so these cards all look relatively good and i can go look at them a little bit more here in a second but we also got transaction cards which looks to be the program of contracts or trades or if anything happens throughout the year it looks like they're going to release transaction players so we got some new ones so i'm assuming darlene's x factor is going up because he's got a new card so that's a win for darlene owners you've got hartman shifley and uh, and halibuck halibuck's a good goalie but obviously if you can you would go after the markstrom because he's a better goalie the fantasy cards are like the other ones they are in the game day set and you build your collectibles here what do you need for one collectible a headliner collectible can exchange for a 24 collectible so that's not bad if you do the objectives and you don't like any of the cards you can put them in here and get three that way so that's nice eight seven eight gold seven eighties six eighty ones and three eighty twos and that'll get you one collectible across the board what does it cost to build a john klingberg it costs one collectible to build a john klingberg obviously i'm going to take a shot on that I, i'll trade in eight 74 overalls all day for an 81 that could be an 82 all day because that'll that'll be a good exchange later on maybe seven for baldy so right here they're saying it's seven collectibles for an 83 but one collectible for an 81 and then 12 collectibles for an 84 this this math doesn't make sense three collectibles for an 82 i i just don't know how they did the numbers here i don't know how they i don't know how they ran the math but either way um all these cards we're going to go look at. The transaction cards look like the only way you can get those is by pulling them in packs. So, auction house. And here we go. We're going to start with the transaction players. We're going to start with Rasmus Dahlin. 85 speed, 86 acceleration. That's nice. That's nice. Um, 90 defensive awareness. Elite edges, which as we know, elite edges is, is absolutely crazy right now. And his synergies get him up to a 93 defensive awareness and 92 stick check. Which stick check in this game, if you're good at it, guys, is really powerful. Halibut comes with a speed synergy. You know, you can never hate that. 68 aggression, 84 speed. Goalies are just, like, they just, they're awesome right now. I love it, EA. I don't know what you're doing with collections. I don't know what you're doing with collectibles. And I do not know what you're doing with sets and events, making uh, making everything a little more complicated and hard to do and confusing. But leave goalies alone. Don't start touching goalies because who knows where you would send them with what I'm seeing right now. Mark Shifley, six foot three, good size. Um, his hands all get a boost 88 speed 88 acceleration 79 face off so you can't use him on the dot you're gonna have to use him on the wing and his shooting is is really good ryan hartman got a nice contract good for him 85 speed 85 acceleration everything else is kind of meh but he's an 81 overall so he shouldn't be too costly to get and uh his defensive awareness is at least 84 so it wouldn't hurt you in the in the d zone and his speeds i guess manageable enough if you wanted to try to use him or you're a fan of the player might as well start at the bottom and work our way up uh john klingberg's absolutely disgusting looking as i'm just looking at him at the 87 speed 87 acceleration but he only has 80 defensive awareness so that's someone i'm gonna have to use her because he's not gonna be the ai that breaks up that play for you so i'm gonna have, in the d zone if i'm use if i'm in the d zone i'm gonna have to use her john klingberg which is fine because 87 speed i'll be able to i'll be able to cruise around with him he's a good looking card um the defensive awareness is is a little low but the speed is fantastic and six foot three is is uh, very nice slavkowski 85 speed 85 acceleration six foot three you know we're getting the big boys giving the big boys some speed is nice defensive awareness is down body checking is okay shooting and hands are okay so if you're a fan of slavkowski this card's not terrible it's not terrible kuzmenko 87 speed 87 acceleration five foot eleven he comes with sniper forward and close quarters close quarters is still really good you just have to get a little closer to the net so it's not terrible it's it's still a really good uh, really good ability to use and 87 speed is is always nice ryan nugent hopkins 87 speed at six foot 78 face off so he's still not getting you that draw but with two-way forward you can get him up to an 81 a little better but still not where not where you want it to be with what's out there right now we're up into the 87s for face-offs 86 87s and, and 81 you just you can put them there but you're gonna lose a lot of face-offs jacob markstrom we don't really need to go into much about jacob markstrom he is unbelievable best goalie in the game if you have his 82 you could upgrade to the 83 if you want to build it um if you don't want to build it you don't have to build it his 82 will serve you just fine but this nice card to add it's it's just a shame that they added him to the game so early because i would have liked to have seen markstrom around christmas time with like an 89 event card 
Taylor Hall, always good speed, 88 speed, 88 acceleration. His shooting stats are in the middle, so they're not bad. Hand stats are okay. He's a, Everything's in the middle, but he's an 83 overall. It's what to expect. He comes with Big Rig, which actually isn't bad. I, I've seen in uh, NHL 23, Big Rig activate a lot on Soderbaum, and uh, Big Rig is a nice, nice puck-carrying ability like unstoppable force it's just it, it activates a lot and it's really nice matthew boldy playing against the toronto maple leafs he has workhorse and close quarters again close quarters is fantastic workhorse is good it, it gets strength up and balance up a little bit to wrist shot accuracy 86 speed 85 acceleration at six foot two matthew boldy doesn't look bad and then evgeny melkin the big card in the event 85 speed 85 acceleration 79 face off because they're keeping the face-offs down on these cards. Maybe if he wins, how they're going to move him up by one overall is crank up all their face-offs. I don't know, but maybe that's their plan is to, to boom up face-offs to, to bring up their overall. Who knows? But uh, ankle breaker isn't bad, and you got uh, playmaking forward. Again, not terrible. Now I can do quick glance, right? Until we start seeing these teams play and seeing how they're, how they're taking off out of the year. We're, nobody can really predict anything, right? But if you want to go quick glance, Edmonton's going to beat Vancouver. Toronto's going to beat Minnesota. Montreal will beat Chicago. And Pittsburgh will probably beat Calgary. Now, if Chicago looks good tonight, which I can't wait to go see. I'm going to go watch that game here soon. I got to get this video done and edited and out to you guys so we can start talking during the Chicago game about uh, what we think about these collectibles. But yeah, so that's the Tuesday content, guys. I can't wait to get Rivals Rewards tomorrow because um, they're going to be last year's good rewards. And uh, then we're into this year's rewards, which I want to say I just don't want to give up on it yet. I think these rewards can still be a good system. I think it could be okay. But as it stands right now with no communication, no, no direction on what they're doing, like I said, it seems like we're working for a company that's just trying to confuse us and pull a, pull the wool over our eyes because it's so confusing. I don't get it. I don't get it. And I wish I could get it. I wish I understood what was going on and I could tell you guys better, like, this this is what's happening and this is why they're doing it and this, 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 and this, and it all makes sense. And I wish I could tell you guys that, but I can't and it doesn't look like it makes any sense. But I thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy the video, even though it's not typically uh, what I do. Um, I don't I don't mean to be negative. I love this game. I love the game of hockey. I love playing this game. I love Ultimate Team. I love it. Building a team out of cards, playing, playing the game, it's a blast. I really do love it. I just don't get why they want me to spend more time and why they want you to spend more time in the menus, building sets, which is already a tedious process and takes so much time, instead of playing the game. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Until next time. Ciao, ciao.